Hi, Buzz Allen here. Welcome to the Propaganda Game. This is the final video in the series that are describing the various techniques used in the sections of the game. This video deals with Section F, Techniques of Maneuver, or Dirty Tricks. There are ten techniques in this section. They are diversion, disproving a minor point, ad hominem, an appeal to ignorance, a leading questions, complex questions, inconsequent argument, attacking a straw man, victory by definition, and begging the question. Diversion is to get off the subject. This happens if two people are having a debate or a, a, a conversation, and one of them starts to talk about something that's completely off topic, has nothing to do with the issue being discussed, has no value for supporting their argument. This is a diversion. Uh, oftentimes people will do this if they're losing the argument and therefore they're just trying to change the subject. The diversion is full when the second party rises to the bait and accepts the red herring and, and begins to debate the new topic, leaving the original issue unresolved. In this example, a politician giving a speech is asked a question about public safety, to which he answers, I have worked hard to help eliminate criminal activity. What we need is economic growth that can only come from the hands of leadership. Obviously, this is a diversion away from the actual question about public safety. Uh, and he's more comfortable uh, mouthing platitudes about economic development and his uh, superlative leadership. Disproving a minor point happens when someone is presenting a, a, an argument with a, a number of pieces of evidence. Some of the points are more important and maybe there's a few trivial points. When, when the opponent seizes on one of the most trivial points and finds a way to discredit that and then behaves as if that destroys the entire argument uh, just because they've disproved a minor point. In this interaction between a father and a son, the dad says, son, you can't go stay overnight with your friend because your room's a mess, you haven't done your chores, and your homework's not finished. To which the son replies, dad, I can't put out the trash till mom finishes cleaning the kitchen. This is obviously a minor point. If uh, he went and cleaned his room and finished his homework, mom would probably be done with the kitchen and he could take out the trash. But he seizes on that one or point uh, hoping that this will refute the entirety of his dad's argument and that he will be allowed to go stay with his friend. Ad hominem is a Latin term which means a personal attack. So instead of attacking your argument or your, your proposition, your opponent attacks you personally. Uh, and it is true that a person's past record is something that might want to be taken into account when you're assessing the truth of an argument. However, it's not the sole basis for judging uh, evidence or assertions. And uh, often an ad hominem attack takes the form of discounting someone's argument because you're saying they are prejudiced or biased. But even if a person is prejudiced or biased, that doesn't mean that what they're saying isn't true. Also, ad hominem is commonly uh, used to uh, accuse the opponent of being inconsistent or hypocritical if, if they're not living up to what they advocate. But again, just because a person not be, may not be able to walk the walk that they're talking about doesn't mean that it's not a good thing to try to do. Rush Limbaugh, famous uh, radio commentator, was once quoted online as saying, Obama's a clown. You don't have to be a scientist to know that the president doesn't know what he's talking about when he says that fossil fuels are the energy of the past. We've got more oil than we need. We'll never run out of it. It's all we've got. Obviously, he's more comfortable attacking ba Obama personally than providing any sort of statistics to support his position that we have limitless supplies of fossil fuels. An appeal to ignorance is a proposition that states that something is true simply because it has not been disproved, or the converse, that it is untrue because it has not been proved. And it's simply not the case that everything that is disprovable is absolutely true. Uh, this would not be true of a scientific theory. There has to be some sort of positive confirmation that a, a theory uh, predicting behavior is, is valid. 
At the same time, uh, it's certainly not the case that uh, everything that hasn't been proved is untrue. Uh, it may just well be that the circumstances have not been able to be replicated that would provide a convincing confirmation. John Lennon of the Beatles was once quoted as saying, I believe in everything until it's disproved. So I believe in fairies, the myths, dragons, it all exists, even if it's only in your mind. Who is to say that dreams and nightmares aren't as real as the here and now? He actually states the, the very definition of an appeal to ignorance and then makes an attempt to expand our minds a bit about what the nature of reality is. Leading questions are often employed in uh, courtroom scenes. A leading question is one that dictates or suggests an answer, or one that will incriminate the answer regardless of how it's answered. Uh, the classic uh, legal quandary w would be as if a lawyer asked someone, have you stopped beating your wife yet? It doesn't matter how they answer it, they're guilty in either case. Here's an example. Asking the question, showing this picture, how fast was the white car going when it smashed into the truck? Well, it might not have been going fast at all. The truck might have smashed into the car. Leading question. A complex question happens when there is a series of questions, and they could be leading questions. The questioner asks a series of questions and then demands a simple yes or no answer to all of them. But when, when there's more than one question that's been posed, it's completely possible that the answer to some of them might be yes and others no. And so this puts the answer in, in, a, in an unfair position. So this example, there's a court case where a young woman is a black belt uh, in karate and was attacked one night while walking and beat the guy up. And the lawyer here is saying to the witness, do you like to walk outside at night on warm summer evenings? Don't you think this behavior means you're just inviting people to attack you so you can pulverize them with your black belt kung fu moves? Tell the jury, yes or no. Well, she can't answer yes or no to this because, yes, it's true she enjoys a pleasant evening stroll, but no, she's not trolling for attackers just so that she can beat them up. Complex question. An inconsequent argument happens when the arguer actually does prove or establish something, but it's not what he said he set out to prove. So an inconsequent argument differs from diversion. With diversion, there's just a, a, a shift of attention to a completely unrelated topic, and nothing is really proved. You're just changing the subject. Whereas with an inconsequent argument, Something is established or proved, it's just not the central issue that the argu arguer was claiming that they were going to resolve. Senator James Inhofe from Oklahoma once uh, gave a speech in Congress on the topic of uh, legislation for climate uh, change. He walked in with a snowball, handed it showed it to everyone in a stunt and said, I asked the chair, do you know what this is? It's a snowball just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out. And the implication is, is that pointing out that the weather that day was cold outside would refute the entire premise of that we are, uh, that 99% of scientists studying climate change are saying that we are in a period of global warming. So this is a very good example of an inconsequent argument. Yes, he proved it was cold enough outside for there to be snow, but no, that observation of the daily weather does not uh, disprove the uh, studies of, of climate change and global warming. Attacking a straw man happens when uh, the opponent either restates your position falsely or exaggerates the consequences that may follow from your position. And often that exaggeration can be particularly extreme. In this example, uh, Pat Robertson, the uh, 
minister, televangelist uh, from the 700 Club TV show, was actually quoted as saying, Feminism encourages women to leave their husbands, kill their children, practice witchcraft, destroy capitalism, and become lesbians. Now, most people would attribute slightly less catastrophic consequences to uh, people embracing feminist views and philosophy, but clearly uh, Pat is fervent about this issue and felt compelled to make this uh, attack on a straw man or a straw woman, as the case may be. Victory, by definition, is a tactic whereby uh, your position is defined in such a way that it excludes all possible negative cases or adverse evidence that would disprove your, your thesis. Another quote from John Lennon, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. So the end is clearly being defined as the state where everything is okay and no complication of daily life that we could possibly face uh, would be any kind of uh, disconfirming evidence that uh, we're not at the end yet. The final technique from the maneuver section is begging the question. Uh, this is often called circular reasoning as well. In this technique, a person assumes a statement as being true that has yet to be proved. And commonly this is either done by defining a term with synonymous terms or even the same word twice, or a circular argument where uh, A is used to prove B and B is used to prove A. And the example we have for this was a pretty delightful meme in which uh, it stated using the Bible as proof for the Bible is circular reasoning then using science to prove science is also circular reasoning and this is a delightful uh, begging the question within begging the question it is interesting it when you look at the uh, the differences in approach to human knowledge represented by revelatory experience in religion and uh, scientific method. Uh, clearly the problem with revelatory knowledge is that um, since, since it is something that perhaps only one or two people had clearly and is not publicly observable, uh, the, the question, a question of whether it's cir circularity is, is being uh, raised. Uh, on the other hand with science, Science is really a, a, an ever-increasing uh, approximation of theories approximating, predicting, observable and measurable behavior and experiments. And the thing about scientific theories is that they are never actually completely proved. Uh, it's just that uh, some, some theories that do not do a good job of predicting actual measured uh, behavior can be disproved. But uh, the, the theories and ideas that come to be viewed as scientific facts are actually leave the slightly unsatisfying uh, quality to them that they can never be absolutely proved. So the two uh, approaches to human knowledge are really diametrically different. And they, they both have strengths and weaknesses uh, because of that. And so to even insist that both should be evaluated on the same basis is actually begging the question at a, at a, at a deeper level. So this, uh, this meme itself really is a kind of a delightful uh, uh, example of, of the differences between uh, religious uh, reasoning and thought and scientific uh, method. An example of no technique, in a hiring committee meeting, a woman raises the objection, I just don't see how we can take a chance on hiring a man with three separate convictions for fraud as our company treasurer. I realize he's paid his debt to society, but this position requires absolute trust, and he would be a risk. Uh, 
this observation is not an example of ad hominem. A person's history involving three convictions for fraud is certainly relevant in considering them for the position of, of responsibility for the company's money. Uh, so, so there are times that considering someone's past behavior and personal qualities is relevant, and this would not be an example of using a propaganda technique. So this concludes the uh, section on techniques of maneuver and also as well this, this, this series of videos on all the techniques in the game. We would really encourage you to begin to play uh, and you can do that by just selecting one or more of the sections and then press the ready button and this will then give you a series of examples to evaluate dealing with just those sections. You can also pick uh, some of the spheres of, of uh, daily life, politics, categories like campaigns, partisanship and war, or relations, peer pressure, family relations, education, injustice. Uh, these are all ways of, of picking various kinds of examples to look at and, and practice uh, seeing how well you can predict how the author uh, believed uh, the example uh, exemplified a particular technique. We really encourage you as you begin to learn about propaganda and start to see examples around you, and you certainly will, uh, we really encourage you to submit them and to begin to add to the database, and uh, who knows, maybe you will become uh, a master of one of these sections by submitting uh, examples of every technique in them, or be inducted into the Fraternal Order of the Golden Shovel, which is our highest award given to people who submit examples of all the techniques in the game. Uh, please have fun with this, and we hope you, your vision will grow and expand so that you are not prey to these kinds of maneuvers and techniques that are present all around us.